when you are polite and civil and you're open and honest in negotiation, you're more likely to get people to be polite and civil and open and honest uh, to you. The other way is concessions. This idea is that negotiation, many of them, are this trading of concessions back and forth. The concession being, I give a little bit, you give a little bit. Well, that concession engine is fueled by me swapping back and forth these kinds of concessions. It's reciprocity at work. And so that's why when you're making concessions, you want to do a few things. One is, when you make your opening offer, you want to build in room to make some concessions, because that's going to inspire the other side to come and meet you halfway, maybe, and make some concessions. If you don't build room in, there's going to be a problem. Let me give you an experiment. They did this experiment where they had uh, a couple of people, um, and they take $101 bills, and they put it on the table in front of these two people, and they say, you have two minutes to divide up those $101 bills. And if within the two minutes you can come to an amicable agreement about how to divide it, you get to keep your share. But if you can't, no one gets anything. Those are the rules. But one of the people is my confederate. One of the people works for me. And I tell them, OK, in this first round with this first person, what I want you to do is I want you to claim as much of this $100 as you can without you know, looking so completely selfish. And I want you to stay there. It's called the high firm negotiation style. So you, you, you claim a high portion of it, and you stay there. So the first round, she does that. So, so let's say she says, 80 bucks. I want 80 bucks. You get you know, 20 bucks. That's the first round. In the second round, with a different person, I say, OK, I want you to be the fair and reasonable style. And with this, is fair and firm. And I want you to claim half of it, and, but you won't negotiate anything less than half. So the second style. What she does is she says, OK, I want 50 bucks. You get 50 bucks. Third round. The next person is high and flexible, high and flexible. And so they say, yeah, I want 80 bucks. But when the other side, and you get 20, and the other side says, well, 20 is not fair. I want you know, 50 bucks. And the other side says, well, how about 60, 40? Or how about, and they negotiate off that 80 at some point. Does that make sense to everybody? So it's high firm, fair and firm, high and flexible. So here's two questions, because this is experiment, and they did it you know, hundreds of times with this confederate working for the experimenter. What is the style that yields the most money, the most dollars, to the person using it? I will save you the suspense. It is not fair and firm. It is not high and firm. It is high and flexible. In that style, and you might think fair and firm wouldn't do much, right? Because it's, you're already giving a lot of way. It's 50-50. But you might think high and firm would work because you would, you, would, you would stay there, you'd ask for a lot and you would stay there. But that doesn't work because you lose too many deals. Because a lot of people will say, you know what, that's not fair, you can keep your 20 bucks. Um, no one's getting anything, right? They sabotage the deal. But in, in high and flexible, you give in, and even though it may not get to 50, an even share, they feel like you've given something and they make the deal. Here's the second question. In what style did, after they did this experiment, they had a survey, uh, how much the one negotiator like the other negotiator. In this case, how much one negotiator liked the Confederate. <coughs> and guess what style the, uh, the Confederate ranked the highest in terms of likability? I'll save you the suspense. High and flexible. So even though, on average, those people paid more to the high, the high and flexible person, they liked them better because they were seen as being in a negotiation. I'm often asked, you know, Mike, I don't like this negotiation stuff. It's so, it's so tense and conflict-filled. Why can't I just say, here's a fair offer, and it will be a fair offer, and that's it? And the reason is, is because people don't trust you. Because even if they seem it's a fair offer, they won't believe you. They'll think, oh, I can get it for cheaper than that. And also because, excuse me, you're, you're, you're excluding them from the conversation. You're excluding them from the negotiation.